good morning to uh, our lecturer, Ms. Ang, and our fellow friends. So today, our topic is going to be about Italian neuralism, and my groupmates are Shafika and Prishwin. So uh, before we start our presentation, we would like to show you guys a short video we made for you guys, like the whole recap of Italian neuralism according to the film uh, The Bicycle Thief. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of SAP Productions. Today, we will be talking about Italian neuralism. The use of neuralism is effective in presenting realistic situations. Understanding neuralism is important because it was the source of many great films such as The Bicycle Thief. Italian neuralism also influenced a number of genres. Realism doesn't mean showing real things, but showing how things really are, said by the amazing Bertolt Brecht. The use of non-professional actors are very prevalent in neuralism films. Also, scenes from everyday life of the working class are common. The film often explores Italian society and focuses on social problems such as poverty and high unemployment. Victorio De Sica, the director of The Bicycle Thief, used perspective shots often. Many scenes greatly portray the realism of unemployment which gives a cathartic feeling to the audience. The restaurant scene in The Bicycle Thief greatly depicted the social gap between the different classes. The scene demonstrates the difference in culture between how people are treated based on their income and background. Italian neuralism was a very influential genre towards the French New Wave film Breathless. You can view certain aspects drawn from the genre such as filming a location with natural lighting and presenting how people interact in everyday life situations. Vous êtes fâché que j'ai pas dit ça de au revoir. Non, mais j'étais furieux parce que j'étais triste. T'as rien à pas de s'endormir. Italian neuralism has presented film in the most realistic fashion possible. For this reason, the genre has been watched and appreciated from its birth and onward to the modern generation of cinema. That's it from us, guys. Thank you. Uh, okay, so yeah, uh, Italian neuralism is also known as the golden age of national. A uh, golden age is the national film movement characterized by stories set among the poor and the working class. So Italian neuralism has certain aspects to its film, such as filming on location and frequently using non-professional actors as well. Italian neuralism film mostly content with the difficult economic and moral condition of the post post World War II in Italy. Okay, slide three. Okay. Italian cinema is actually the only one to salvage from within the very fear it depicts uh, a revolutionary humanism said by Andre Bazin. The long held the long held standard view of Bazin's critical system is that he argued for films that depicted what he saw as objective reality, so such as always portrayed in Italian neuralism film. So uh, these were the struggles of people in Italy where, after the post World War II. Uh, all right. So there was certain aftermath that happened in Italy after the World War, such as uh, millions were dead. Uh, citizens were homeless, as you can see, their homes were damaged and things like that. Uh, economy has collapsed, uh, which often happens when there's a uh, war going on. Destroyed infrastructure, infrastructure. Uh, end of Italian Italian monarchy, and also unemployment was rampant, which is what that's always portrayed in films relating to Italian neuralism. Okay. Uh, Italian neuralism came about as World War II ended and Benito Mussolini's government fallen. So, uh, causing the Italian film industry to lose the, its center. Neuralism was a sign of culture change and also social progress in Italy. It films represented 
contemporary stories and also ideas that were often shot in the streets as the Cincinnati, Cincinnati studio has been damaged. So this is what happened. After World War II, Benito Mussolini's regime influenced the production of White Telephone, which is also known as the Wealthy of People, a film which depicted the high social status of Italy. Mussolini's fascism ideologies established since Cinecita, the largest studio in Europe which aimed to disseminate Mussolini's propaganda along with reviving the old Italian cinema. After World War II, Italian nihilism was born as a way of fascist rejection. So, nihilism films are with generally filmed with non-professional actors. Films typically explore the condition of the poor and the lower working class. Neuralist films often feature children in, uh, in major roles as though their characters are frequently, <laughs> frequently more observational than participationary. So the children play a key role in this and their presence at the end of the film is an indication of their role in neuralism as a whole. As observers of the difficulties of today who hold the key to the future. All these were very well portrayed in the 1948 Vittorio De Sica's film, The Bicycle Thief. Right. And now I'll pass it to Shah. Okay, so thanks, Alex. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the five elements of your film. Uh, anyone here remember all of the five elements, all complete? Okay, I guess not. So I'd uh, like to you guys on this. So the first one is politics. So um, after the fall of Benito Mussolini, uh, basically fascism was gone and the constitutional monarchy was basically ousted. So Italy had this choice of having to choose between a constitutional monarchy or republic and they went for republic. And the reason being they thought that having to be a republic country, they thought that their lives would be better and all. However, that didn't turn out um, as planned uh, because basically um, the amount of suffering, it was actually broadened instead of them thinking it was going to be lesser. So this could be seen in uh, the Bicycle Thief where you can see majority of Italians, they just wander around and they don't really have like a purpose in life. So second is cultural, where you can see that after World War, um, Italians were basically um, lost in terms of their culture. So they didn't really know if they should stick with their own or if they should actually look towards United States because uh, United States basically they were like they was the it was like the world leader so basically everything was just Americanized and then you can see that um, all products of America were brought into Italy for example in the film you could see that Antonio was actually picking up this Rita Hayworth poster and if you actually to look closely you can see it was actually a wall full of American film posters. So that really shows how Italy was basically an, a, a consumer country. Moving on to economy. Um, after World War, the economy of Italy was actually very bad. You could see from unemployment, poverty, and all these things going around. And you could also see from the film itself where Antonio and all the other men, they waited outside this um, government building just to look for work every day. That even Antonio was basically so tired of it that he just slouches and days around for waiting for a job. And fourth, social. So basically there was this really distinct difference between classes in Italy. Um, there was no in between, it was just high and low. So if you're high, you get really uh, respected because you're from a well-to-do family and that people will cater to your, all your needs. And if you're from a low income family, basically nobody wants to care for you and all these things. So this could be seen from the restaurant scene and the film where we saw how the rich family, um, the head waiter, they catered to them, but then when it was time to take the order for Antonio and Bruno, basically they made the other waiter to take their order. And last but not least, national identity. So um, this idea really showcases how prideful Italians are. But then after World War II, most scholars really agree that the national pride of Italians it was actually very weak because they were basically very lost of the war. They didn't know what to do at all. So this could be seen um, in how people were basically just 
stand our fish towards everything Italian and look towards America. So moving on to the elements of Italian neorealism, basically for all films of Italian neorealism genre, these characteristics can be seen in all of these films. So first, um, it depicts social issues like war, poverty and unemployment. So this could be seen uh, in the movie uh, very visibly where Antonio had to wait for all these jobs to come around and when he had a job, he needed a bicycle and then he couldn't really commit to that because he actually pawned the bicycle and to, in order to get the bicycle back he had to pawn the bed sheet and all so basically it's this whole circle where you just can't have everything you want and it's also due to how the state of Italy was back then and second is how Italian Eurasian films they reject conventional happy endings of Hollywood films Basically, you know, Hollywood it was just like the prime. So all Hollywood films, they just depicted happy endings. So it's like you have all these tragic incidents, but then in the end, it's all, you know, all smiles, everything rainbows and all. But then for Italian neuralism, it shows reality. That's what it is. So it's a reflection of real life. So you can see from the ending of The Bicycle Thief even that when after Antonio steals the bicycle, and then Bruno comes to comfort his father, it was just very, it was hanging, there was no closure because basically that's a depiction of real life. And third, um, it represents human reality. So basically Italian neuralism, it focuses on the working class community and um, it shows um, the basically the reality of what went on last time in Italy where there was this really um, distinction between all the classes and how all these classes are treated and all. And fourth, um, the use of non-professional actors. Um, basically, most of the directors of Italian neuralism really um, resorted to this because they felt that having to use non-professional actors really um, could depict the situation much more um, clearly in a sense that the viewers can connect to what they see on screen. So, um, for example, Antonio, the father, he was actually just a factory worker. Bruno was just a kid um, the director saw um, during one of the edition. And then Maria, the mother, was just a journalist. So all these people, they didn't really have any like acting backgrounds. They were just taken off from the street and then put in this film. Alright, so now moving on to Christian. Okay. Um, I'm talking about the exchange value. So Karl Marx, um, a philosopher, he attributes the exchange of value to as an item which holds the cross economically. So as you see for aspects, first is value, use of value, uh, exchange value and price. For example, Antonio managed to get a job, but in order for him to actually to do his job as a poster boy, he needs an Bicycle, but then like how earlier she said, how Shantika said that um, they, I mean, he bought his bicycle. So now they now they have to. So Antonio and Maria was, I mean, was their bed sheet to drive the bicycle back. Value motive, as you can see throughout the whole movie, um, the main value is actually the bicycle. So and this bicycle has been a key employment factor the whole time, and. And this bicycle has also become an object of hope to which they can actually provide him with um, a better life for his family and for himself. So these are the three main directors of Italian Neorism. First of all is Roberto Rosalini, who was born in 1906. His film focuses normally on the after effects of war on individuals. As some of the films are Rome, Open City in 19... 45 and also Pazza, which is 1946. Second will be Rocino Visconti. He focuses more on the historical and the cultural aspect of Italian cinema. His films are The Leopard, which is in 1963, and also The Earth Tremble, which is in 1952. Last but not least, as you guys know, this is Vittorio De Sica. He focuses more on the sentimental elements, on like the characters and how like the beginning, the middle, and the ending of the film. His films are 
the Sunshine, which is in 1945, and 1946, sorry, and the Vasquez, which is in 1948. Masculine theory, uh, we have chosen Antonio because Antonio, first of all, he is an individual that's unemployed, and secondly, he struggles to meet uh, both ends. For example, that as one of the scenes you see is that like, when he got the bicycle, he was able to fulfill his work and also to keep his family happy by earning a living. But then once the bicycle was stolen, he couldn't fulfill both of it. Secondly, he is portrayed as a masculine figure who is expected to support the family because he's earning a living. And thirdly, he's the main breadwinner ever since he accepted the job to be a poster boy, uh, putting up a movie posters in the city. And thirdly, um, towards the ending, he is unable to accept the fact that the main element is not actually the bicycle, but actually his son Bruno, because his son Bruno has been with him through thick and thin. Psychoanalysis theory, which is the ID, ego, and superego. So ID is like the devil, um, ego is like the neutral, and superego is like the angel. For instance, as you can see in Egypt here, Antonio is stealing someone else's bicycle out of desperation. Antonio didn't really think that he would actually get caught because when his bicycle got stolen the first time, they didn't really catch the person. And to me, I feel that like, I think something inside, inside him is telling me, like, so what, still a bike, like, nothing's gonna happen. You know, it's not really a big deal. Secondly, is the reality of their lives brought their only valuable possession, their bicycle. As you can see, they are just sitting out on a pavement and surrounded by them are people on their bicycles. This is the reality of what their lives are. Their lives are meaningless after losing their valuable possession to the bicycle. And thirdly, uh, Bruno portrays his moralistic self by giving back his father's pride after Antonio failed, failed attempt to steal a bicycle. Even though knowing that the father might actually go to jail, but Bruno still stood by his uh, father and looked up at him as a role model. A sample of the scene can be taken is that when Antonio was asleep, got caught by other people, Bruno still picked up the father's head and actually ran towards him to go and see like, what's happening. And last but not least is the author theory, which is the director, Victorio Di Sica. Um, like I said earlier, he's, uh, he favors sentimental narratives in his films. Um, his characters are invisible individuals made visible to us. For instance, it's the, like, we as individuals, um, we have a tendency to actually um, capture odd elements in a film. So towards the beginning, um, when Antonio got a bicycle, we were like, oh, okay, bicycle. So like, we weren't really like, we didn't really curious on how the movie is going to be like. But once his bicycle got stolen, we were like, oh my God, like, is Antonio going to, is he going to find his bicycle? Like, what's going to happen? Like, is, he, is his wife going to leave him? And then they are hassled by the oppression and poverty. Even in back in 1948, Italian, um, you know, Italy is not really, uh, it wasn't really doing well, especially if you were actually poor. Um, major the locations you see in the movie is actually all real location, like that's actually Rome. And last but not least is desperation of the working class. Uh, this one, it also depends on like, if you are high class, then you can afford, if you're not high class, then you cannot afford. So this one basically says um, the frustration that Antonio had from the beginning, when he didn't have the bicycle, then when he had the bicycle, he was all well, and then when he lost his bicycle again. And then like, this question also refers to Bruno, where like, he can't really um, get what he wants. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, uh, that's all we have for today, so thank you so much. Right now, we're going to move on to the discussion part. Um, so, I'll be distributing this paper. Okay. So, all right. So, from the screen grab that you guys have on your paper. Uh, okay, so um, from whatever you see on the paper, so you have to discuss how the following scenes relate to the concept of Italian neorealism. So who has this? <laughs> Alright, so how does this scene relate to the concept of Italian neorealism? Sorry? Oh no, it's okay, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, I 
Thank you so much. All right. So, okay. so who has this scene? Oh. <laughs> Maybe we'll move on to the next scene. I guess I think we'll move on to the next scene because I think no one has it right here. Okay, so who has this one? All right, key. Okay. So how does this relate to the concept of talent neuralism? Um, I would say that, uh, I say that uh, if life is tough and if you lost his bicycles and at last he has no choice, uh, he has to stole the other's bicycle. Yeah, okay. Also, to add to that, we also believe that this kind of represents the reality of all these working class people because they are so desperate that they have to like resort to having to steal from others. So, so, okay. so thank you. And last but not least, who has this one? Okay. So, yeah. Okay, right. I guess also to add to that, it's basically whatever you said, um, not to really resort to all these happy endings of Hollywood and just to show reality what it is. Okay, so thank you so much guys for participating. You guys can um, keep the paper with you because behind there's actually a few notes which you guys can refer to. Maybe you can use it for your second assignment as well. So thank you so much guys for your time and thank you.